We are seeing financials versus tech. We are seeing in interest sensitive industries really struggling here. And, and it's because interest expense is up. It's up a lot. Interest rates are up a lot. So if you see that, you need to be careful. There, there, Shouldn't higher interest rates help financials in theory? It, it, it should help financials in general. Will it eventually? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to let you answer the question. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Here's, here's the way we look at it. We look at interest expense as a potential expense on the, we look from the bottom up. So we see three big costs coming through with these positive trade policies. We see higher labor, labor cost. We are seeing higher energy costs and we are si seeing higher interest costs. And the higher interest cost is the one to keep an eye on because it's been really, really cheap to get money for a long period of time. And that's a big difference. So who's that going to hurt most? Oh, uh, it's financials? Well, it, it, no, not necessarily financials. It should help. If, if, yeah. if the yield curve does, um, you know, becomes less flat, that should help. Uh, but again, if you look at home, home builders, for example, it, the purchasing power of a consumer is down 10% versus the price they could have paid last year for a house because interest rates are higher. So again, that impacts the consumer on that level. And you look at, and you look at labor costs, and you look at materials costs, and you look at interest costs. Yes. Home builders. Yes. All right, Jamie Cox, jump in here. Uh, how worried, if at all, are you that not only are there divergences that are substantial uh, among and between different sectors, but also as George points out, there are some things that are moving underneath the surface that could ultimately affect profitability. Well, I think that's always the case, but, but I, I, th I tend to like it, look at it a little differently. I look at these type of situations where you have these cross currents of trade negotiations and things like that is actually helping to separate the best companies from not the, the, the companies that aren't so good. So you've got all these multinational companies around the world that are able to navigate these markets. They didn't become the global leaders on accident. So these trade uh, wars or spats, or whatever you want to call them, actually benefit the companies that are able to navigate them. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Nike, for example. It's a very good company, but they have this multinational flavor, but they have a multi-local type in, uh, sort of strategy where they will take, in, for example, in Los Angeles, they actually stock the stores with, with uh, shoes based on the sales on their online market. So, so uh, the people in LA who buy the shoes from Nike, you can actually find them in the stores. That's how they do their inventory. Another example is a, a Swiss-based company that works on financial software for banks. It's called Tomenos. It's based in Switzerland. They have this fantastic software that's able to navigate the different regulatory environments of Europe and the United States. So, you know, you can talk about the cost and all that kind of things, but what, in, in my view, when you're making investments, what you're trying to do is figure out the companies that are able to get through these things with the least amount of damage. And the companies that I cited before are perfect, perfect examples, and there's lots here's, of here's them. Here's the bigger question, the though, Jamie. I mean, are you, are you bracing for sort of a more defensive tilt going into the final quarter of the year? Actually, we're in the final quarter of the year. No. Excuse me, it's October already. No. Um, no. Should we be a little bit more defensive? And in that sort of environment, Environment, if we do see a pullback in the market, you're not. You're not looking for anything no. more defensive. Because I would no, say that no. these stocks would be the first uh, for funds to be pulled out of should the times get a little bit tougher. I think the times are going to get better. I mean, the United States economy is, is really rolling, and it's probably going to continue for some time. And generally, when the U.S. economy is rolling, the world economy comes right behind it. So to, to sort of jump off the track right now is sort of missing the bigger picture. So I, don't, I think that people need to be more bullish, not less, because as the global leader, both in consumption and manufacturing and all, just everything that you can think of, when we rise, everyone else should come along. But it hasn't quite been that way, and I expect that to happen. And, and so we hear all these cross currents. I believe that more people should get bullish going into the fourth quarter, not, not more defensive. I think that's the wrong strategy.